Greetings, family, and welcome to Midnights in Metro Manila. This stream is brought to you by the Uwuver Lord and the Dragonforge. Tonight, we are dedicating our stream to the people who have been affected in the slew of typhoons and storms that has hit the Philippines. If you want to know how you can help, follow at Phil Red Cross on Twitter. That's P-H-I-L-R-E-D-C-R-O-S-S -S on Twitter. Again, our hearts go out to those in need. And now to begin episode three of Midnights in Metro Manila, let's introduce our cast of vampires. I'm Frances Velasquez as played by Dandy. I'm Goyo as played by Matt Gador. And I'm Victoria as played by Rena. And I'm the storyteller as played by Danger. We last left our vampires in the wake of chaotic events. On this night, they awaken to the prospect of their own mortality, prospect of death, as violations of the masquerade are taken very seriously. Though the viol their violation of the masquerade has to be determined tonight, it may very well be their last night on Earth. And on their last night, Franzi spends it on stage at Obar. I would like you to begin by rolling Rouse first, and then roll for your performance, charisma, and of course, performance. Add your bonuses to that as well. Your looks bonuses, I mean. Your heart is not in the performance tonight. Though you wanted to give it your best, it's not your usual glorious and beautiful dance. And the audience Magic. senses it. My mind is on other things at this time. And that's when you see in the corner, at the end of your performance, one lone person clapping. She is excited, and you know her face very well. It is Stephanie, the young girl with whom you've had a friendship for over two years. Well, I curtsy and blow a kiss towards her. And she catches it in that usual way that she does. And she waits for you off stage. After I finish my lip sync show, I walk backstage and out to onto the dance floor and I find Stephanie. Is everything all right? Uh, it's, it's not, you don't seem like your usual self tonight. Oh, thank you for your concern, darling. It's, well. Nothing to concern yourself about. Things... There are just... Well... Some things one must go through. Uh, if you want to talk about it, I'll listen. You always listen to me. There's, There's been... I... Like... Stroke her hair... And I ask, well, how have your studies been? Oh, I'm taking a break tonight. It's just, it's a little much lately, but uh, I do well anyway. And I thought I'd come out and see you. Um, it's been, it's been a while and I'm sad to see you a little bit sad up there, but Is everything Here's... I'm just really concerned about you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I keep asking. I just I'd rather not talk about it. But thank you for coming out here anyway. I'd rather talk about you. How is your family? Oh, um 
we're okay. Uh, you see her uh, when she pushes her hair back behind her ear. Like she looks away at the, the last instant when you ask about her family. And I'd like you to roll wits and I'd like you to roll wits. And insight? Uh, yes. You see, something is on her mind as well. And when she when she turns away, you see there is a bruise that is revealed slightly by her movement. There is a bruise on her shoulder. And as she does that, you sense there is a bit of hesitation as it aches a little. Like, you you notice that it does hurt her to move a certain way. No, family? my family's my family's okay. It's just something happened, and I I didn't know I didn't know who to turn to about it. I pull her into a hug. Oh. Okay, I pull back, and I and I look at her with concern, and I say. Do you want to talk about it? Do you know how it is? For... For trans girls? We're targets. And the other night, it's just... These people started following me and... And I just ran as fast as I could, but they caught up to me. But I'm so glad I had that pepper spray because one of them tried to bite me. I'm sorry that I'm so that scared. happened to you. She breaks it down in been. tears. I pat her head gently and allow myself to well allow her to rest on my shoulder if she wishes but... she cries softly against you like she's been holding like she's holding something in there's ache in the sobs as she tries to keep quiet there there child Sorry, I'm ruining your dress. Not at all. I'm no. just so tired of feeling unsafe. I'm so tired. Will you tell me? Can you tell me where you were when this happened? I was on the way home from school. Do you see the... the do you see these people often? Did you recognize them? I didn't. Do you remember what they looked like? She gives you a description. And according to the description, it seems like the way she describes them, it's like they're addicts. A few of them. The one that tried to bite her uh, the one that tried to bite her was curly-haired, 
seemed foreign. And he had a long and thick beard that he trimmed into a point. And you are stuck with a familiar image. Western foreign? West West Asian. I see. Well, would you like me to walk you home tonight? It's no trouble. I would love that. Are you sure, though? Of course. Of course, my dear. You don't want to tell me what's going on with you? I'm in a bit of trouble with the law. Hopefully everything will turn out fine at the trial. You didn't kill anybody, right? (laughs) Oh, don't be ridiculous. And she believes you. Not without a problem. Like you brush off the strange and joking question in a perfectly normal way totally not in the way that someone who has actually killed a person (laughs) no I'm glad I'm glad you're my friend I I don't know what you saw in me well people like us must stick together we are like family we are I'll be the T and you'll be the Q. Of course. So, uh, do you want to, like, get coffee before we go home or something? Again, she suddenly... What would you like? What would you like? Uh, I think it's collection uh, of sticker season. Is there? Are you co- are you collecting stickers? Mm-hmm. You know what? Can you order me a cocktail tonight? I feel like tonight's a cocktail night. Like I've never had a drink. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get you a nice frappuccino. Oh, all right. Uh, the frappuccino comes and uh, she drinks it cream based you're not even going to let me have coffee well it's late my darling I suppose you're right it is a school night after all is it I sometimes forget university is so hard <laughs> she thinks oh it is, it is, it is. Francie um, also does not know whether it is a school night <laughs> How do you head home? How do you... What is your path to her house? Um... I book a grab. Okay. You get into the ride share where she talks to you about uh, studying to be a doctor. She's excited. She's pre-med. And she wants to join the ROTC, even though it is hard for people like her in the ROTC. She just wants to prove everybody wrong. And she talks about a boy. There's this boy in her class that she's been talking to a lot and He's, you know, not that cute, but he's nice. And he's active in all the organizations of all the causes. 
she supports and well, she finds that really hot. Well, it sounds to be like a base requisite that you're whatever boy or girl or other that you're with is at least socially aware. Yes, of course. I mean, you know how it is. I just hope he likes me too. I'm going to ask him out tomorrow, actually. Well, why wouldn't he? You're good enough. You're a lovely young woman. Thank you. Any boy should find you a catch. And if he doesn't, then he's missing out. Thank you. And the tear rolls down her cheek again and uh, she lunges in for a hug just as the car stops in front of her house. I like hug her back gently and and she winces a little back. bit from her own hug, from her own movements. Mm-hmm. And I think you can roll with medicine if you have it. I do not have medicine. But you can, can I still just roll, roll wits. wits? You okay. can roll wits. Nope. You don't sense anything. That being said, she gives you uh, your traditional dual kiss on the cheek and she says bye Franzi bye me- Steffi dear I'll send you a message it'll tell you how it goes when I ask the boy out oh yes please use a condom I'm just gonna ask him out jeez and she's blushing and it's like oh. <laughs> It, it, I have, we haven't even gone on a first date yet, Franzi. <laughs> and she just rushes off. And like, <laughs> Absolutely made shy by the comment to use a condom. And, uh, and the vehicle speeds off into the night. No, I wait outside her house Um, for a bit. What is your Um, goal here? I'm just going to observe the area, see if any people... I look at the people passing by, looking for kindred or ghouls. Okay. Um, is that is this what you're gonna do for the rest of the night until the trial? Well, no. It's a, how for how for how long maybe, do you plan to do this? Just until you're sure Stephanie's safe. Ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that would be intelligence investigation or wits investigation. When you wait here, and observe it's simply for your own comfort and you you're not sure you'll find anything and you don't mm. you just stay parked outside her door for 10 10 minutes just trying to reassure yourself that whatever tried to chase her won't try to take her now okay and do you go home after that to get dressed for the trial? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna scrub off this glitter as best I can, redo my makeup to something less dramatic. Okay. Meanwhile, Victoria is speeding off on her motorcycle. She's headed to a place she's been to before, a few times, quite a few times in the past. Tonight, her outfit is fairly different from what it usually is. It is meek and white, a very saintly type of attire. 
She's been here so many times, both known to its inhabitants and unknown, sometimes to just observe, that she knows the roads by heart. And she stops at the Mary Mother of Mercy Orphanage. She enters and she hears the all too familiar voice of the priest who manages the orphanage, Father Matthew. Victoria, oh, you're here. I'm so glad to see you. Good evening, Father. I'm sorry if it's a bit late. I oh, was it's, hot with work. It, it's fine. I know. I know you're you you work during the day and you're very busy. But what brings you to us tonight? Is, is everything all right? Everything's all right, Father. I would like you to roll manipulation and subterfuge for that. Come, come, come into my office. I'll, I'll, I'll make you want coffee. I mean, you seem to be up so late all the time, and but you never take my coffee. I've, I've been told it's quite. Uh, no, it's not good. I'd be lying if I said it's good. It's terrible. My, uh, no, it's all right, Father. I was just here to see the children for, uh, if they're still awake. Stay. Some of them might be, but uh, most of them are asleep. Mm -hmm. But I know. The more rambunctious ones are probably, you know, pretending. Well, shall we see? He guides you to the children's wing where where the beds are. The moment he doesn't turn on the lights, he like lights the way with his phone. Just and you notice that when he when the lights hit some of the children, some of them like. Try to hide that they're still awake and talking. It's 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 adorable and it's and it's not at all subtle like the way. Well, looks like some children are still having fun. Miss Victoria, is that you? Yes, it is me. Hello, everybody. Is there? Are they still? Are you guys still awake? You guys should be sleeping. Uh, all the kids, like there's eight kids in this room in particular. Their, their ages vary from seven to twelve. And they all get up. And it's like, and Father Matthews is. <laughs> so you're all awake. I guess they weren't sleeping. <laughs> so much for bedtime guys it should be your bedtime mm -hmm. why are you still awake we, we have trouble sleeping you know we're eight kids in a room one of them says it's like of course we're not gonna sleep right away and father matthew's just hmm. <laughs> father matthew's somewhere in his 60s uh white hair and thinning at the top and a gray beard and yeah he just uh... so I'll leave you to it uh, I'll be in my office if you need anything uh, Father Matthew asks of and so what have you been up to Miss Victoria oh you know Ben having some adventures adventures yes. like what did like, they involve like pirates yes superheroes? oh they involve superheroes and now we're trying to defeat the great evil do you guys want to hear before bedtime but you promise that you have to go to sleep afterwards can we still hear it if we don't promise anyway <laughs> oh you rascals Come on, gather around. Okay, okay. You sh sh shut up, Tony. Shut up. <laughs> All right. So once upon a time, there were two great heroes and their sidekick, the dog called Goyo. So the two superheroes are in the city looking for bad guys. 
when they found this group of evil we called the madam and of course the superhero Vicky and Fran has to save the day and so they try to stop the madam but you know the great evil is really strong and now the superheroes are in trouble and they need your help uh, how can we help by going to sleep like good little girls and boys Oh, <laughs> uh, I'd like you to roll uh, charisma and performance with that. Uh, add your looks bonus and a plus two bonus because of your relationship with these kids. Oh my. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten successes. As far as these kids are concerned, you just told them the greatest story they, they've ever heard. Let's just say your story was the summarized version, the one that you talked about. But uh, in in the in-betweens, you managed to fill in with these amazing details like that take these kids on this amazing adventure of Fran and Vicky and their dog, Goyo. <laughs> and you notice that... Uh, Father Matthew is actually waiting outside listening to the story as well and you hear him laughing when you joke and you hear him you just hear him filled with this and you see him filled with this great joy and as the children make their way to their beds to sleep uh, you walk out and he meets you it's like so are you married miss victoria unfortunately not oh again i'd like an odd time to bring it up but uh, i thank you for your last donation that really you're really keeping this orphanage alive and i'm so grateful the children are so great uh, grateful and we Without kind donors such as yourself, these children would have no homes, nowhere to go to. I understand how it feels like. Can you take a walk with me, Father Matthew, for a while? Oh, I'd love to. He offers his arm. It's more for me. I. It, it, I have a bad of knee. Of course. <laughs> and uh, as you walk around the orphanage, is there something you want to talk about, my child? I have experienced uh, and seen the worst of people growing up. And uh, I grew up in a very religious family but I never really did get properly baptized my relationship with my church was very strong and I was supposed to go and become a nun but I guess that pathway is forever blocked off for me May I ask what happened? I had a calling. And you know how it goes. I have to stop pursuing my dream of becoming a nun for something that will help more people and uh, the reason why I love helping children is before I decided on pursuing 
this other path, there was an orphan child who was selling flowers every day, every night, right outside my apartment. And she, as little as she is, she had nothing. She had no food except for the ones I give her. But she would always give me a flower. On the day that I ended up on my path here, she hugged me and begged me to not go. But here I am. I don't want to live my life with regrets, so. kind of want to reaffirm my faith. Is this something you've been guilty about for a long time? That couldn't have been a few years ago, more than a few years ago. I'm sure the girl is somewhere out there. Maybe you can still see her. I... I regret not, Father. I would do more harm than good. Do you believe in the devil, Father? Do you believe that he exists walking in this world? Such an odd question, but... Um, I suppose not in the same way, not in the literal sense that there is a great encompassing evil. You see the word Satan, or from the ancient Hebrew, Shaitan. It is simply a word for adversary, and it's, it was used from moment to moment in the Bible to represent one particular enemy. Could be snakes, could be an employer fooling, fooling a young man into marrying another woman. Or it could be the demon in the garden tempting our Lord into sin. The great evil. I, evil does have many forms. It does. And from what I've read, which, uh, don't tell anyone. The other priests might not like it if I say this. I think the great evil is the evil we must vanquish in ourselves, above all. I'm not perfect either. Did I ever tell you I was a soldier? Oh, I did not know that. Yes. Uh, he pulls up his tattoo and he shows it to you and I was in the Philippine Constabulary under the Marcos regime and we saw a lot of things I did a lot of things I regret and one day I just couldn't anymore and I think you do not have to worry about regret, my child. You see, my favorite verse in the Bible, which is funny because I always forget who said it, where in the Bible it was said. I don't know if it was Timothy or whatever. The Lord looks not on the appearance, but on the heart. And in regret, the Lord will see your heart. Regret is the good pulling you away from the evil in your past, the evil in your nature. Regret, guilt, these are things to hold on to, things to keep us good. And you mentioned earlier, you were never properly baptized. No. Do you want to be baptized? Oh gosh, this is gonna hurt. Um, yes. 
follow me. He takes you to the bathroom in his office and just offers you just a simple monoblock chair that he places in front of the sink, which he fills with water. He begins to fill with water. And as you get ready for the sacrament of baptism, uh, he, you, you hear him whispering the blessings blessing the water so that it becomes holy. Now, it's unfortunate that uh, you don't have any godparents right now present, but I think you're a little old. And I'd like to do this baptism a little bit differently. He gets through the rites. I would like you to roll intelligence and... um, Intelligence, just intelligence. Okay. You managed to remember the rights of the, the rights of the church. You say amen in all the right parts, nervously. And finally he gets to this part. I will do a little differently. I don't think you need godparents. So I will ask you. Do you renounce Satan and all his works? I do. He continues on asking. Asking the questions, the the baptismal vows of God parenthood, but he asks them of you again and again. And do you respond to all of them? Do you just say, I do, I do, I do again and again. So you believe in Jesus Christ and his father and the Holy Spirit. I do. And then finally, he takes a bit of oil on his hands. And as it drips on your forehead, nothing. I would like you to roll composure. Composure, yeah, composure. It fills you with this incredible light as he says, he says the words. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, running the water over your forehead. And there is this immense lightness. You almost burst into tears, but you just manage to resist it with your composure. Because you know that if you burst into tears right now, It would be blood. Something does change. In this particular moment, inside you. You forgive yourself a little for leaving that orphan girl all those years ago. You forgive yourself a little bit for everything that's happened to you. Oh, thank God. And you gain one humanity. Okay. Which results in like the most curious flush of color in your cheeks. And the tears run down your face anyway, but they're not blood. They're normal salt and water tears for this moment. And suddenly you are also struck with the oddest craving 
and you cannot help but burst out. <laughs> Do you have any wine, Father? <laughs> Do you and have any wine? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I suppose this is a wine moment. Uh, Let me... <laughs> uh, I know we don't have the seal of confession right now, but you please don't tell the other priests about this. And uh, <laughs> he goes into his desk, and there's a secret drawer, and he's like, oh. and he brings out a bottle of wine. <sighs> One thing I'd like you to remember: there's this verse that a lot of Christians misinterpret, Catholics, Christians alike. Ah, uh, yes. There is no way but through me. And they quote Jesus on it. They Most people think it's, uh, there's no way to heaven but through the, the church, religion. But they forget that Christ is God, God is the word, and that the word is love. There is no way but through love, my child, as he pours a, a, pours you a glass of wine and one for himself. That sounds very and he wise. And he raises it to love. To love. And the glasses clink. And he drinks it a little faster than you thought a priest could. It's like, oh. Uh, been a while. Oh. <laughs> oh. And when you taste it, it is the first thing you have tasted since the day you returned. It is rich and sour <laughs> and a little bit bitter in your mouth, and it's beautiful. Thank you, Father. That was... <sighs> Thank you. Anytime, my child. Now, the next step would be confession, communion, all that, but you don't have, we don't have to do that all tonight. <laughs> and I am so glad that we don't slap people anymore for the right of confirmation. That was just a little weird for me. <laughs> <clears throat> it is getting late. I guess I have to leave and let you rest, Father. Oh, thank you. Uh, then he, you see him pouring himself another. <laughs> I'll leave while. you to it. <laughs> thank you. I'll see myself out, Father. You enjoy the rest of your night. Please come back soon. The children miss you a lot when you're of not here. Course. I will pass by the children's room, make sure that they're all tucked in, turn off the light, and take my motorcycle back to uh, Mother's Base of Operations. She opens the door to you. Victoria. I shouldn't be here, but also glad you're here. Mm. Uh, Mother? Are you ready for tonight? Are you is your is everything airtight? Your stories are you going? Of course. We would like to talk to Helen would be at the trial, right? Helen would be imprisoned. Uh but can she here, be yes. She here. will be here. Yeah, she will. Okay. That's that's great. I messaged Franzi and Goyo that uh, Helen would be at the trial. If they want to talk, they can arrive early. And then uh, I'll be here. Message that I that yes. We should talk to Helen. The message I respond with a thumbs up emoji. Goya receives this message. 
on his way to someone else's home tonight. Someone he loves. And he knocks on the door and Toneng answers. Koyo, I wasn't expecting you tonight. What are you doing here? Uh, well, I, uh, I, just, I really wanted to see you. I use Blush of Life before uh, you open. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'd like you to roll your rouse check for that. Also, uh, please roll for composure and to subterfuge. Add a bonus from your Blush of Life. Okay, that is two, three successes. Is everything all right? So you just came here to see me? Yeah. Is I mean, you know, can't I just come to see you every now and again, just whenever I want, just because I want to? Yeah. He blushes, and come on in, come on in. Um, do you want to drink something? I mean, you never drink anything. No, like you, I'm, <laughs> I'm, always... I'm fine. It's so nice to see you. So, this, what's been up with you? You seem busy lately. Yeah. Um, really a heavy case uh, arrived at my uh, doorstep couple of days ago been working it um i haven't even had the time to fill your sister in completely but uh you know it's uh it's work it's been eating up uh almost all of my time did you solve it fix it whatever needed to be done well um we're getting there. It's just, uh, you know, well, in the process, wow. things got a little uh, messy. So, um, got a little something I have to attend to later tonight. It's kind of why I wanted to see you. Oh, I, I, I hope it isn't. You sure, you, you sure you don't need the time to prepare for whatever it is later? This is all the preparation I need. He is taken aback and he blushes. Doneng is a beautiful man. And am I blushing now? Am I, I'm blushing. I'm blushing, am I? Yeah, I, th I think you are. So and then I take my uh, place my hand on his cheek and I gently caress it with my thumb he was about to say that you're so sweet uh, but he it's stalled by the moment your skin touches his and then he puts his hand over your hand and just looks at you I'm glad you're here. It's such a wonderful surprise. I'm glad I'm here too. I pull him in for a quick kiss. The kiss, the moment your lips touch his, it becomes more than just a quick kiss. It becomes that deep kiss of longing. Of having waited too long for a thing to arrive. Whether it is just for this moment that he's been waiting too long or for the last few days, for the days and maybe weeks he hasn't seen you. 
and I assume you take this further. Yes. Okay. I would like you to roll dexterity and charisma plus your um, a bonus from blush of life which gives you a plus two I'd say. See, the curious thing about vampires is not all of them feel sexual pleasure. For many, it is it is a chore. Something to get them from point A to point B in human interactions. For some, it is a way to to hunt, to drink to get their fill when a vampire is in love and wants to make love it is an act of pure selflessness it is an act of giving of of wanting to give someone the intimacy that they themselves have trouble experiencing It is beautiful. Moonlight through the window. The sweat on Toneng's skin. The occasional creak of bed springs. And it ends. And you are holding each other in this loving embrace. When Toneng asks, What's wrong? I'm afraid, I guess. He turns to face you, puts his hand on your cheek. Afraid of what? What's going on? Are you in danger? Uh, in a matter of speaking, I just, um, well, the thing I'm going to tonight is uh, really important, and uh, I could lose everything, I guess. He lunges forward again in that deep kiss trying to give you comfort and whispers, you'll never lose me. I'm just worried you'll lose me. Then don't go home. He holds on tight. Let's run away. Let's just go. I, I can't. There's just there's nowhere I can go. Not where it, I won't be found. He. You feel his tear drip from his face onto your cheek and you'll make it I believe in you you'll survive you're resourceful I I, I can't take, lose you I take his face in my hands and I just go um, you know before I became a detective, doing everything that I have been. I uh, never would have given it up for a a normal life, you know? Not always uh, running, hiding, 
because it's, it's just the kind of life that I uh, I want, you know. But uh, you know, normally I wouldn't be so worried. I wouldn't be so scared about what's gonna happen tonight. But uh, here I am, wishing that I could just go back. <laughs> and uh, just spend the rest of my days here with you. Uh, okay, I promise that if I make it out of this night alive, we are going to go out in the sun, in the day. I know you wanted to go to a museum, check out a show. It's always in the day and I can never be there for you. But I'll be there. idiot I don't care about museums well I do I love museums but I just want to see you again I just want you to be okay you come back to me you come back to me okay I promise he goes in again for a kiss and I'd say you can Things start up again. I uh, like you to roll for dexterity plus charisma and uh, your blush of life bonus, which is plus two. Okay. This time, the intensity of this this round leaves him leaves Stunning tired and falling asleep as he says, whispering to you half asleep through eyes barely open. Don't go. Don't go. Just stay. Just stay. I have to. I'll see you again. I promise. He finally falls asleep. And I suppose you start to make your way towards. Yes. I uh, button up and uh, head on over to the Baronesses. You all arrive. You're all there. Goyo arrives last. Had some preparations that I was doing back at my apartment before I left. I did you see my? I also had preparations. You are both taken aback by. Victoria's outfit a little bit. It's it's very conservative. The dress goes down to the knees. Uh, she's barely wearing any makeup. Like it's washed off. And you you can all sense that level of distraughtness in each other. The nerves. Vi Is that what you're wearing to the trial, Victoria? Oh, um, uh, uh, yes. This is what I'm wearing. Okay. You know, Victoria, I wouldn't point it out if it weren't, um, strange, but you look like you're glowing. But, like, not in a, not in the 
your beautiful way, kind of like you're alive. Did you look, did, did you just get a, did you empty someone tonight? Or? <laughs> Why would I tell you? I'm, let's just say I had a pretty interesting evening. How was yours? Uh, well, I've made, I've set my affairs in order. <sighs> I saw to it that my, all my wigs and my clothes, perhaps the rest of my apartment has someone to go to, should should I not be reclaiming them tomorrow evening? <sighs> yes. <laughs> I'm fine too. Not that you asked. Now it's not the time for fighting, your mother said. I think now is the best time to get your story straight. Mm. Mother, may we talk to Helen? Sure, she's still in the cells. Um, yeah, go ahead. Here's the key. Shall we uh, make our way there? Yes. Helen the Thinblood is waiting nervously. Oh, it's you. It's all of you. Hey, Helen. What's going on? I haven't heard anything in these last few Ew. days. Have you been told about the trial, at least? A trial? No. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Has anybody talked to you aside from us regarding affairs? Has Baroness Fallow is here. Hmm yesterday and she gave me some blood and we talked for a while and she asked me about things okay well we shall all be tried by the anarch court of metro manila and well i think it's important that we have our stories straight we? Of course. You, you too? Are, you are part of the witness. And no, we I mean... Are, you... Yes, we are currently under trial for allegedly breaking the masquerade. Because the situation with your group, previous group, was... Yeah. Was broadcasted in the news because of yeah. someone making a sloppy job. But yes, we will have no you. time for blame. We all siblings. we all did a sloppy job, okay? <laughs> all right, but yeah, Helen, we will have to ask you to speak sometime during the trial regarding what you know, regarding what happened, honestly. Don't put that behind me. I'll, 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 I'll answer whatever they want. And don't let uh, the slimy bastard intimidate you. Okay. Oh, God. Yes. Bastard. Yes. Slimy bastard. Mm. You. You'll one. know. You'll know when you see him. Um. Just. Well, you know. Answer honestly, and. Remember, it's the Camarilla and that La Sombra Ca that is responsible for all this mess. You were, at most, an unwitting pawn. Um, or a victim, and most we, likely. Indeed. And we were... Well, we did our best to make sure the masquerade was not broken, yes? Mm -hmm. I said, don't break the masquerade, right, as people were jumping onto the vehicle. 
And there were, after all, no people it in was... the area. No well, kind. Helen, That's were you intro. were you aware that it was a setup? That you were trying to round us up into we that just, area? We were just following orders. Mm. And yeah, we were just Yeah. I'm just told to do this and do this and that's what we did Ka was very forceful with it. what were you told to do specifically kill everyone in the car and drink one if we could interesting all right anything else any more questions I should write all of this down. I don't have a piece of paper. I'll think about. It. I'll just. I'll answer all their questions and just gotta hope they're gonna be merciful. I pull a piece of paper and a pen out of my bag. Give to Helen. Take to begins writing. You think I'll be all right? We'll make sure of it. Uh, she reaches out and she grips on your head. I'm scared. Oh, don't be scared. We will ensure that this trial will go smoothly. And hopefully that bastard doesn't try anything underhanded. But you can trust in us. Helen? Just remember, we're all kind of victims here by the, uh, the madam scheming. With the camera. Sorry, and, Franzi. Yeah. And you are part of our Anarch family now, after all. I hope so. But I hope so. Trial will commence at around midnight, and it is it's going to be held at a fancy hotel. You have to go there separately. Uh, take separately, as in separate from your mother, who is not allowed to speak to you, at least on principle are you ready before we leave I... I ask mother if she has any uh bag blood that i could have kind of slake my hunger a little before the trial i could use some too honestly well we're already here There's only one. One will be fine. Uh, who takes it between you two? It's a social thing. Uh, well, and I am more skilled at social things. I'm hungry too, but I, we don't have time to eat. All right, if one of you wants it, go Fra ahead. Franzi can have it. I could not drink from- Thank you. Ugh, bad blood. You really can't. Mm. I owe you one, Goyo. Okay, uh, that reduces your hunger by one. <sighs> Trial. And on the way, in the car there. I have sent a message to Stephanie mm -hmm. telling her that I've, I slipped a credit card into her pocket on, on the way back to her house and she should use it if she ever is 
in need of a ride share. So always take a ride share, especially when you're going home. So basically and, you've given her safe travel options. Yes, and I've messaged her that tomorrow if uh, stop by my apartment if I've given you the address. If I'm not there, ask a key from the guard at the reception and take what you will from my clothes and my wigs and anything else you want from my apartment. Um, at this point, uh, Stephanie's asleep, so these messages are just received, but not read. I'd also like to send messages to Luz this time. Okay. Um, just telling her that uh, if I don't message you by the end of uh, tonight or uh, tomorrow night at the latest, go to my apartment, get my stuff, get any files you need, burn everything else. All right. Must be nice having someone. Right now, you have each other. This is your mother speaking. And for now, that has to do. She takes one of the vehicles and, is dri and she's driven to the trial location, as are you. I'd like you all to roll composure when you arrive at the location. It is what appears to be an event hall that has been converted to this purpose. You see five and a table at the very center of the room, the very head of the room. Uh, at the very center is the, the Enrico, Enrique Escolar himself. There is an audience of other court members that you've seen before, around 10 of them, including Baron Estala, including Ma Koya Sire. And then there's you, and in the corner being held prisoner is Helen. She's being kept in a box. Rouse the blood to boost my charisma. Okay. Your charisma is boosted. But let's see the effect of your rouse. How many dice is that again? One. as you bring a flush of power and confidence to this to the circle of your personality you, using the magic of your vitae you feel the hunger increase ever so slightly it's in the back of your mind the beast just growling a little bit I'm hungry it says You are asked to sit across what appears to be the jury of five when Enrico Escolar stands. We are here tonight, gathered to determine the events that have resulted in a possible masquerade breach. How do you plead, all of you? Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. My... Go on. My kindred. There was no masquerade breach. There were no witnesses. And there is nothing that conclusively points to what happened having been linked to 
the kindred. The kind are, well, there is no pr conclusive proof, and the kind could only speculate, but they may soon as likely forget. Ah, but according to the to the events which you reported during that night, according to the, to the report, there, you all of you had significant wounds all over your bodies. And that does means this you're... affect anything about a masquerade breach? Because as far as the kind is concerned, there was none. Nobody saw us injured aside from the fellow Nobody kindred? saw you injured. But what about the blood at the scene? <laughs> what blood? What blood at the scene? It was washed away in the, in the rain. After a tremendous earthquake bore a hole through the roof. Oh, very tragic. Um, Oh, the the roof in the impound where the vehicle was. There was a leak, and the rain washed the blood out of the vehicle as well, along with the street where it happened. And the two witnesses you left. What two witnesses? The guards of this impound of which you speak, who witnessed a fashionable young man who are now raving about the this horrific young man they saw the, the night that happened. They are claiming this is the work of demons. <laughs> humans what are strange things. There are very strange creatures in there. All they saw was... All they saw was... A strange and fashionable young man. And... Perhaps... After the... Pole... Power pole came down on the guardhouse and they were in the midst of prayer they were caught in a religious stupor i mean they almost died they could have seen anything hmm. i'd like you all to roll uh that would be resolve plus or charisma or manipulation plus persuasion looks apply. Okay. He is awestruck. His jaw drops. He is astounded by the level of preparation to which you have arrived at your trial today. Even the ace he had up his sleeve, the two guards that are now raving, are made to look like they're insane. Their credibility shot, at least to the rest of the just the cars. The other four. You notice, I would like Franzi to roll wits awareness or wits insight or charisma insight. Does look supply? No. And you see the some of the just the cars are a little bored in the background. There's no It, it, it's look. It's starting to look like an open and shut case. Can you all tell me? Just the car. Enrique begins again. 
what you learned from the interrogation of Helen the Thin Blood. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may, if I may speak. I would like to bring to your attention that there is a Camarillo among our mids that is creating dustborns all around Metro Manila. Dustborns that are not trained on the ways of the masquerade. Dustborns that are being hunted down like animals whenever their sires are bored. I would like to bring to your attention Can I call Helen forward? May I? Sure, you can do that. Uh, I would like you to roll Charisma Persuasion or mm, no, uh, this might be Charisma Leadership. This is your assertion of your authority beyond court measures so beyond yeah so you'll have to does look supply yes that is five successes the justicars murmur and enrique goes this is most irregular and then he's interrupted by a justicar behind him we'll allow it and Helen is pulled from her box. You, you notice it is a steel box. And, and ripped from it in chains. And thrown to the center of the to the middle of the court. Enrique approaches you and whispers in your ear. Ask your questions. I would like you to roll against his charisma and intimidation. Uh, you would be that would be composure and i have unswayable mind it's not a mind affecting uh, uh, it resists intimidation Ooh, so you get a bonus to it yes i get the bonus your four successes he is terrifying there is It scares everyone else in the room. Everyone else who can see it, at least, on your side. But you. It is as the meeting of an unstoppable force and an immovable object. <laughs> and he is even surprised at how well you took his intimidation. Now the Justicars ask you to proceed with your question. I shall proceed. Helen, may you tell us about your experience while how you got turned? Don't worry, you trust me. I was walking alone at night. Just headed home in Providence had her home from school. And I was a little late that night, so I had to walk. I missed the tricycles. And then I don't remember what happened. I just woke up the next evening and I was just so thirsty. And this was This voice, was, this vampire was telling me that I, oh, I'm sorry, I said it's vampire. Right. It's alright. Uh, you see some of the Justin cars take offense at the word vampire. Some of them, just some, but not all. Kindred, who, who said I could drink if, if I didn't. 
if I did what they wanted. They beat me to within an inch of my life, locked me in a box for a week. And then I woke up so thirsty. And there was a person in the room when they woke me up. And by, by person, I mean a human. They made me drink him. And who are they? Can you describe? Marilla. I don't remember who made me. I don't know if it was, it was the one if it was Ka, I don't know. Tell us more about Ka. Ka was the one who led the attack that night. We answered to him. He seems like a foreigner. But he speaks our language. And um, he drinks all the blood. He doesn't let us drink anything unless. We are able to drink it from another kindred. From another, yeah. And he said we could, they'd stop beating us, they'd stop hunting us, they'd stop playing games with us if we, if we drank someone of 13th generation or lower, if we drank our our right to be in the Camarilla. But it wasn't just any 13th generation or lower, was it? No. It had to be Anarchs. Had to be us. Yes. And may I bring to your attention that the whole situation with the Reyes family that we were investigating was a setup all along. It was brought to our attention that there are more groups like Helen that is set up all over Metro Manila. And I would like far... you to roll charisma manipulation and then continue. Charisma and uh subterfuge? Persuasion. 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 Five, six, seven. You see murmuring in the background. The murmuring of the justice cars and continue and since we are all here anyway the situation i at least know should not continue because as far as i am aware of our rules we are not allowed to turn anybody else without express permission we don't need a lesson in in the rules of the masquerade, girl. I am aware. However, why is I this not am speaking oh. as I was? You are not just the car here, young Ventru. I am. I invite you to roll. Charisma and intimidation as well. Just to stare him down. Or resolve plus intimidation. Whichever whichever you feel is higher. Looks apply. Yeah. Come on, messy critical. <laughs> this is one of the times you want a messy critical. Can I roll with an advantage in that thing? You added your looks bonus, yes? <laughs> That's four successes. That's a lot of successes. Yeah. And he will roll to oppose it. <sighs> you see his, his resolve. 
flicker for a moment. You know you've struck him in, struck a chord within him. But wisdom dictates that you do you not interrupt him right now. Because after all, he is the justice. A setup you claim, he says. <laughs> How convenient. A perfect excuse to cover up attracting attracting trouble. And the Camarilla. He turns around to face the other Justic cars and he is rolling. Now, I don't know about you, but, and I am not one to defend the Camarilla myself, but the Camarilla are sworn by the masquerade as well. In fact, the Camarilla disdain any, the creation of any thin blood. How much logic is there in this excuse that there was a setup? And then you, if I may. you see them murmuring among each other. And I'd like you to roll Wits Insight on that one if you if you want to. I'll go first. You see they are they are being swayed a little bit. That uh to them the the it makes sense. It makes sense that uh, why would the Camarilla do this so out in the open? This is not the Camarilla's way. This hasn't been the Camarilla's way at all. If I may, Justicia, it's quite clear that this was a setup because consider there were no street lights in the area in which. The enemy's car crashed into ours. There were no lights for the first eight floors. The area was cordoned off. They must have known to follow us to or lead us to that location. And the situation with the Reyes family. Well, it was the... head of the homeowners association who contacted us about the incident and the incident does not did not um make it to the police or the news i would suspect that camelot marilla were trying to keep the masquerade but well the creation of Duskborn, Helen mentioned, was in the countryside, not here in Metro Manila. I not don't yet. know. Not yet. I don't know what their game is, but I don't think one can argue that the Camarilla were not at least trying to keep the masquerade here, even as they did set us up. I invite you to roll. Charisma persuasion with looks bonus on that one. Seven successes. You see them concede to your point that uh, it's it. It was not here. And then Enrique asks, or specifically, he, he takes Helen by the throat and lifts her up you greasy little thin blood what proof have you who is behind this truly and helen is choking up, <sighs> up in the air and she's like the the madam and that's when you see the other dusty cars are taken aback their eyes widen it's like and 
you notice that Enrique's fury just escalates a little bit because the fact that the madam was brought up every kindred here understands that the madam is just crazy enough to think of a plan like this which lends credibility to everything you've just told them and in his fury he hurls Helen across the room Oh boy. I tried to and punch Helen. Panting. And save she's not on the coming. Adjust the car, please. Hurling our witness. Just then, one of the other Justicar stands up. A female. A Nosferatu female. I would like to ask some questions. I run to Helen and help her up. Of the Duskborn? I try to see if Helen is alright. If you might behave and take your seat. Justicar Escolar. Are you all right, Helen? Come here. The, in a flash, the Justicar, the Nosferatu Justicar, who just stood up, is there in a blink of an eye and helps Helen up as well. You've met her before. They call, they call her the Silver, in particular for her silver hair. No one has ever discerned her true name. Is Helen all right? Are you all right, child? And uh, Helen just coughs a little bit, coughs a bit of blood from how hard she was gripped around the throat. She is a thin blood after all, a lot less vampire and a lot more human, a lot more fragile. Oh. And you notice the the silver, she reaches into her own coat and you notice that her hand goes a little too deeply than, than you would like. And then she pulls out a bag of blood. Here, child, drink. Where, was she keeping that? Where can I get me one of those coats? It's not, not she sure. didn't take it, it from the coat. It, um, great coat. I'm not sure that's, that coat would fit you. It, it, it wasn't from the coat. It, it, it wasn't yeah, from the coat. Yeah, I don't think it's from the coat, uh, Gregorio. I wouldn't want that for you. Well, maybe a little bit. But, you know. Just the car, Enrique. This is unbecoming in a trial. And she rolls. That's the car in Rico. My apologies. It will not happen again. She takes Helen to the center of the room and actually brings her a chair this time so she's not like on the floor. The madam. What do you know of the madam, child? And I don't know much, but we kept talking about her. When Ka would go on the phone to talk to whoever he was, whoever it was he answered to. We heard the madam a few times. The madam will not be pleased. The madam thanks you saying things like that I unfortunately don't know anymore and and the silver leans forward where are you from child and don't lie 
and you see the face of Nosferatu transform. It is so terrifying, even to you as kindred, as as the silver's eyes blacken fully and the fangs extend far beyond what they normally would. And the, the, the wrinkles and folds on her face and flesh take their true form. And and Helen, so frightened, leans back and says, And the silver's face transforms back into a thin haired old lady, thin silver haired old lady, just still utterly hideous, but calm. Fear and fury is gone. And she says, turning like this to the other dusty cars, she speaks the truth. And they murmur some more, except for Enrique, just sitting, staring at the fact that his case has just been unraveled. <laughs> Have you anything else to say, child? Helen says, if you let me, I will serve the Anarch movement as well as I can. Please. I had no choice. We had no choice. So please. Begging you. If I may, Ramsey says. Okay. I don't see why we shouldn't allow her to. She wasn't acting on her own volition for the incident, and well, now. She's well motivated to act against the madam and the Camarilla, and she has information. She would be well useful to us, to the end. There's the persuasion with looks. And if I may as well. Go ahead, the silver says. If you need to keep an eye on the Dustborn. I would be more than willing to keep an eye on her. I do have the resources to keep her... well under my wing. Your statement is noted. Uh, you would also roll Charisma and Persuasion for that. Your statement is also noted. Have you anything else to say before the Justicars convene and make their decision? Nothing else. Anything else, everybody else? That'll be all. I'll be all then. Thank you for your time. We will convene, and we will come back to you with our decision. You see your sire waiting in the wings, and Baroness Tala waiting on the other side, just nervous. They can't come. They can't talk to you yet. For what feels like hours, you wait. You guys talk about anything. Helen is pulled back into the corner by the guards and just kept in the chains. I say, I think you two should make up. <laughs> uh, pardon me. Will you? Will you die with a grudge? Yes. 
I will take it to my grave. Well, I'm personally willing to let it go, but of course, I guess I'm not the offended party here, so... Mm. If she... Now, if I told you, Franzi, like, why exactly I don't like Goyo? Well, you've heard about his... About the incident, how incidents, he Incidents, yes. yes. But right after that incident, I was approached by Mother to discuss about potential masquerade breaches if I continue my my relationship with Nut. And so I have decided to break up with a detective all because somebody was a little bit too curious <sighs> ah well that sounds most tragic very tragic Goyo, do you have anything to say about this well i for one had no idea that any of this was going on. I uh, didn't really make any sort of formal report to the Baroness. Once I had discovered that uh, you intended no harm, um, but I am very sorry. I, I had no idea. Was it what you meant to happen, Goyo? Of course not. I mean, I guess if she were planning on uh, killing the man, but then that would have meant a masquerade breach on her own. I was trying to s protect the masquerade. And, uh, you know, I didn't think. That's it. You didn't think. That's the problem. Again, each kindred to their own. What if I was just feeding? Well, I've been more careful now. All right. So it hasn't happened again. And again, I am sorry for what I've caused you. I may be a bit old-fashioned, but I cannot just let that go with a story. I guess it may take a while for me to come around to actually forgiving you. Is there something? Well, this was. Is there something busted. you need me to do, or is it just a you thing? We'll see. Okay. Okay. Oh, Franzi, I do apologize. You're always caught in the middle. Oh, no worries, Victoria. I put a hand on her shoulder. Okay, fuck. This I... waiting is killing me. Um, and then I use a rouse, I, I rouse my blood to use a premonition. I will okay. really... Roll for the rouse, oh, please. This crazy, crazy, oh, this can be really in the middle of a trial with all the justicars in place. You see his eyes go white for a moment and... Goya, what you see you see an image of Helen burning in the sun and and then she reaches her hand out towards you 
and you pull her from the fire. And when you do, her her arms wrap around you, and you're pushed to the ground, and the fire stops. And she says, "Thank you." But if you look up from where you are lying now, you're on the ground. You've fallen in real life. You okay? The chair broke. I swear, Goya, you keep breaking things. <sighs> what did you see? So what did your crazy kindred powers show you? Helen's in trouble. What do you mean by trouble? She was on fire. Set on was fire or? In the sun. Tell us everything. She was in the sun. And? And she almost died. And I pulled her out. I think that means we save her, but not before putting her in danger. It's never quite clear, but think we're gonna be okay? You think? I hope, well, that what Victoria and I had said in the trial will be enough about how Helen will be useful to us and how Victoria will take responsibility for her. Mm. I hope that'll be enough for them to well, not decide to execute her. She has been giving us precious information regarding a common enemy. So, the reaction of Enrique is very, very interesting. Well, we shall see. The Justicar has returned into the room. This time the statement is read by the silver. I would like you all to roll if if it's something you do to try to understand what just happened in there, in that separate room where they convened. That would be wits awareness or insight. You see Enrique is pissed off. Just salt just, just like trembling from fury in the corner. To you it's a good sign. It it likely means that he did not get his way. Finally the silver reads the statement. of violating the masquerade. We find the kindred. Franzi. Of Clan Toreador. Not guilty. Of violating the masquerade. We find the kindred. Victoria. Of Clan Ventru. Not guilty. Of violating the masquerade, we find the kindred Gregorio of Clan Malkavian not guilty. Of violating the masquerade, 
we find the dustborn Helen not guilty of attempted murder we find the kindred Helen guilty the sentence of which she will serve in probation under the tutelage and management of the kindred Victoria who shall answer for her crimes should she betray the anarchs do you agree to this Victoria I do agree You are walking on thin ice, Dusk Ford. And you have been given another chance. Do not waste it. This session has adjourned. And your... And your mother. Just... In the corner there. And uh, Ma just goes... Yes! And everyone looks at her and it's like, oop. Then she goes, Just the car, Enrique approaches you, the three of you, and whispers, This is not over. <laughs> and he walks away. Uh, you're, you're. What a slimy bastard. <laughs> I'd say that went well. Your mother and and Goya sire approach, and Helen is freed. They all approach, you, breathing a sigh of relief. Oh my God! I thought they were gonna kill me. Oh, well, they were, but they didn't. Mm. I told you to trust us. So <sighs> just so happy right now. I'm. Just feel so much safer but I don't have anywhere else to go can I stay with one of you of course I have a big well not really that big maybe a humble home sure plenty of rooms not as big as I like of course (laughs) oh come on Victoria it's more than humble in a very motherly manner Ma just hugs you Congratulations, all uh, of you! Just uh, just gives you a hug. You. I gave her a big hug back. And then I'm very happy. It is very embarrassing. Baroness Stala, ever formal, sticks out her hand and gives you all a handshake. But you do notice something: her thumb caresses, as if to say, "I'm." Good. It's a gesture. She can't appear too biased can't appear too affectionate with all of you at least it is a choice not to be but she does show you that small sign of affection of love and I smile in acknowledgement he's he's never gonna let that go (laughs) I tell you now he's not you just humiliated Enrique Escolar and he's gonna be on your ass forever. I expect it. He started it. We just gave back what he tried to give us. But yeah. we could worry about that another night. Tonight I think we should celebrate. Yes. Indeed. Oh. Would you all like to join me at O-Bar? I'd love to. <sighs> Helen is confused. O-Bar? Oh, all right. Yes. So um, much to learn, this young one. So <laughs> much to learn. Uh, your mother, uh, your sire, Goya, passes. Uh, I'm, I'll pass. I'm a little hungry. I haven't eaten tonight, so I'm gonna... And... All right, ma. You should go get something. <laughs> yeah. And she walks away, and I think that's where we'll end tonight. 
Thank you to our wonderful audience. This has been Danger Gerlan as the storyteller and the rest of the cast. Please introduce yourselves again. Francis Velasquez as played by Dandy. Oyo as played by Matt Gador. Victoria played by Rina. <laughs> This uh, this stream, again, we'd like to reiterate, is dedicated to those who have uh, been affected by the slew of typhoons and storms that have hit the Philippines. If you if you want to donate to the Philippine Red Cross, uh, check out their Twitter, uh, at PhilRedCross, that's at P-H-I-L-R-E-D-C-R-O-S-S. Um, again, our hearts go out to them, or uh, go out to them in this trying time. Uh, this stream is also brought to you by the Overlord and the Dragon Forge. Thank you very much, and have a good night, bloodsuckers. Have a good night, everybody.